September 25th, the new Fox Tuesday kicks off with New Girl's new season. Whee! Then, welcome Ben and Kate. Stay away from my sister before you find out what six years of Prav Maga feels like. Well, like, year and a half plus, like, four years on and off I was traveling. Followed by another all-new new girl. What am I looking at here? Pure, unadulterated friendship. And the Mindy Project. <laughs> Can't believe you're tattling. Tattling is when a little girl does it, okay? When a hot woman does it, it's called whistleblowing. The new Fox Tuesday from your September 25th on Fox. You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's WWE Monday Night Raw After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's WWE Monday Night Raw After Show. All right. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another wonderful AfterBuzz Raw TV show. This may be a little bit of an unusual crowd in this evening. You may be looking a for... Bit. For a fantastic pair of breasts. Um, oh, we've wait, got a fantastic I, pair of breasts. Right here. But they're not the ones you've probably tuned in for. Right. Right across the desk from me, I would like to introduce first, on the left, Mr. Ryan Clum. Yes. Hello. Thank you for having me. Professional wrestler, TV producer, or, extraordinaire. Or I should say professional wrestling in training, because I've been quite about less than a year or so. Very nice. Very yeah. respectful. And yes. to his right, a man that needs no introduction. But he will get one nonetheless. What did you say earlier? You often gonna... imitated, never duplicated. Yeah. And the man of the hour. Actually, off to Las Vegas soon. Correct me if I'm wrong to receive an award. Mr. Rick Drazen, host of the After Buzz Smackdown TV show. Thank you very much, hey. Nigel. It's a pleasure to be here with you, staring across the room eye to eye. Mm -hmm. It's a very prestigious, exciting award that he's going to be receiving But tell us well. a little bit about that real quickly before well, we get on. Well, um, for you who know, don't know who I am, I wrestled for many, many years. Started in 1965, trained by the famous Mae Young. Worked with Mr. Moto and Freddie Blassie and all the guys from yesteryear. Have a wrestling school in Sherman Oaks, California, so I stay I stay current with wrestling. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a big part of my life, but I'm also very very big in bodybuilding training with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I designed the Gold's Gym logo and the World Gym Gorilla, and I'm getting an award in Vegas at the World Gym Convention at the Mr. Olympia for the Joe Gold Lifetime Achievement Award, first met, first time ever. So I'm uh, very happy about it, and uh, very I will, nice. I will be well, there to accept. Fantastic, very fantastic. I'm very excited for you. So you still keep up with the product, uh, and uh, you I still do. love pro wrestling. I love everything. I even love you, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> we know that's not true. <laughs> All right, well, let's get straight, straight down to brass tacks. What do you guys think of the show as a whole? I, uh, I'm i used to SmackDown, but uh -huh. I like Raw. I think it adds a little more pizzazz to it. I thought it was very good More overall. pizzazz, but an extra hour as well. How do you feel yeah. about that? The extra hour is a bit wearing on this man's body. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tough to watch. Brian? Yeah, it's a bit wearing on this man's body as well, yeah. too. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot, especially with... SmackDown and all the other shows they have now. We've got like 10 hours of wrestling to watch every week. So. Let me add, not only do we have SmackDown, we have Raw, and then we have wrestling classes twice a week, and then mm -hmm. Ryan calls me every day talking about wrestling. Mm -hmm. Then we get people who call to want to be wrestlers. So Then you got TNA on Thursdays. You've got yeah. superstars in NXT once a week. Yeah. Then you got Saturday morning There's Slam. a lot of There's wrestling, tons but, but of it. Arguably, you could say that, that Raw is, is really the top wrestling yes. product in yeah. the world today. Yeah. Yes, it is. Which is uh, you know what we're here to talk about today. So as a whole, I thought the show was, was generally good mm -hmm, i mean me i thought it set something up at the beginning it paid it off at the end yes there was a story that's what we want from a television show you yeah, know right. start develop a story and pay it off but leave us wanting more and yeah. i thought we got that today right i um, always say is you know i went to film school and you know worked on screenplays and whatnot and you always want to bring your story full circle kind mm -hmm. of and in this one show you know both especially when you're doing episodic you want your kind of 
a story that goes to your seasons and then your story within that episode. Right. And they did have that nice, uh, yep. you know, coming around to the end in the, the from the beginning promo to the final match. Very tough to do. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about the beginning of the show. So yeah. obviously, every time you turn on Raw, first 15 minutes is a promo, yes. you know. But they have garnered through the last 10, 15 years, that's what people want to see when yeah. they open up a job. I mean, they, they've, got the, they've got the records, they've got the ratings, they understand this. I certainly don't. Right. For me, I'm kind of bored from it, but you know, maybe that's what they need to set it up. So tell us, you know, you guys, what, what do you think of the opening 15? Well, I just had 16 minutes of uh, SmackDown opening, so right. another 15 yeah. minutes of another opening, it, it gets a little boring for uh -huh. me. Mm -hmm. I think you and I talked about this once, that, and maybe you even mentioned it. When you started, I know that Ray Lloyd mentioned it as Ray, well. Ray told us uh, this, yeah. This when is you his start a, show, a wrestling show, let's start with wrestling right off the bat. Right. But they don't do that. I mean, you know, the formula works for them, so they're doing what they think works for them. There you go. I'm like you. I'd rather see wrestling right off the bat. Get right into it. Right. And then you can slide down a little bit and then throw a little promo on us and that. Yeah. But, but I came to see action. I want to see action. Well, yeah. no, I don't mind. I don't mind if it's like five minutes. As That's long as it's entertaining, thing. I'll watch. I'll watch two hours yeah. of Santino Morella. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? But it's just after fifteen minutes, I'm kind of you know getting a little bit longer right, tooth. Yeah. You know, I feel they drag like a five minute segment out to twenty minutes. Yeah. It's it's a bit like I guess if you th go to TV like something like Lost, where they want they stretched out a storyline that should have been three episodes into twenty. You right. know it. It's too much, you right. know. It's, it's there's a lot of wasted time in there. But if you are going to have someone talking 15 minutes, you really couldn't want a better person than yes. Paul Heyman. Right? Yeah, he's good. I mean, he's definitely yeah. good. Fantastic. He has yeah. your attention. He delivers. His, you know, I mean, I've always been a huge, huge fan. Yeah. CM Punk as well, and that's not to take anything away from Cena right. or Del Rio who no. were involved. But but you know, like you said, it set something up at the beginning, yeah. and it, it played, played off last end. night too. You know, yeah. it played off. They brought the referee down who had made the controversial decision last night of. Both Cena and Punk's shoulders were down, so it was a draw. And uh, hey, Pay Heyman and Punk brought him in, saying he did the right thing, you know, and brought Cena in, who also, you know, they said Cena was complaining, but he came in and said, no, the referee did do the right thing. What he was upset was that the main event ended in a draw. He felt they should have restarted it or something. Right. So, right. But, you know, lots of lots of questions, lots mm -hmm. of, of, of things for people at home yeah. to, to discuss, yeah. you know. I talked to Jim Ross at Colifer Alley this year, and mm. I've just started doing commentary about a year, year and a half now for Ring of Honor, and I was, you know, obviously asking him for tips and advice and stuff like that. And one of the uh, piece of advice that he gave me is be cautious about telling people things. Try to suggest questions instead of saying, this guy is going to do this this in the match you know you say mm -hmm. do you think this guy should do this or would it be better perhaps mm -hmm. to do that that mm -hmm. way you're still presenting an educated viewpoint but you're letting them answer the question that right. draws them into right. it you know I makes sense very very interesting you know mm -hmm. um so after that we have our first match Sin Cara and Mysterio yeah and and just quickly I guess before that they gave us a little bit of a Jerry Lawler update ah. right before that and uh Jerry is now at home you know he's left Montreal and everything seems to be fine. So that's, you know. Good for him. Yeah. So I guess, I guess we're all very happy Jerry is okay. Unless you're new, Jack. And then. Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who lost his Twitter account for that? Did you did you hear about that? What New <laughs> Jack, who used to work for ECW, once it hap uh, once all that Jerry Lawler stuff, said he hopes he dies so he can piss on his grave. Uh, and a lot of really evil tweets about. Uh, oh, that's about, a horrible thing to say. It was a horrible thing to say, and I'm not really sure why he said that. If he was, I'm sure it came from had, some time when he was in ECW. Maybe Jerry came in, said something. Yeah, and, maybe uh, took out of context. I don't know. Is yeah. there anybody you hate but that he much? He lost Rick? his Twitter he would for say that. something like that. No, but Nobody? I heard I heard Bobby Heenan, Heenan say one when uh, Heenan say one night that a fan died in the front row and they had him in the back and he said, Bobby, what do you think about that fan dying? He says, just one less guy to spit on me. Ah. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like the same thing, you know. Uh, no, but at least that's a clever anybody. way that he he said it there. With you know, it's it's yeah, one guy yeah. less spitting at me than uh, yeah. you know. I want to piss on his grave. No, so it's no, that's very clever. No, yeah. I don't hate anybody like that. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, absolutely not. So hopefully we'll see Jerry back soon. And next week yeah. we're going to hear from him anyway on Raw. Is that correct? yes, yeah. yes? Yeah. And uh, I guess we should say as well there was no brain damage. They said you know he had lost you know oxygen for a while. Um, they even said, uh, I had heard they said, uh, uh, I think it was Smith Hart said that 
he was clinically dead for 20 minutes. I mean, who knows? You know, yeah. that's internet rumors that's a, a lot time. of times. Yeah, yeah, well, they they said it was a very long time to revive him, and that's why they were worried about brain brain damage. But, but we don't know for sure he's then. fine. We don't know for sure then. They tested him. He's fine. Yeah. He's all well, good. He's still all good. early days. Still yeah. early days. We wish him yeah. the best and hope for well, see him back on the And that he soon. may wrestle again. They said the doctors have said he may be able to get back in the ring again. Well, well, Nigel, let me ask you one question. Yeah. Don't we all have a little brain damage to be wrestlers? Well, that's it. Once we have been <laughs> yeah. wrestlers, you know, I mean, yeah. and, and this is uh, how old you know, Ryan? Is it? I will 38? be 39, 39 in two weeks. You know, and, and the older you get, the more that becomes an issue. Thank you. You know, it, it's the truth, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I know a lot of guys, uh, not personally, but in ECW in the back in the old days, yeah. had a lot of concussions. And, yeah. and this, back in the late 90s, there were guys who were sort of wandering around couldn't find their car keys because yeah. you know they just weren't there. But because they were young enough, they took the time off. <laughs> He's looking for his my, keys. Where's my embassy? <laughs> <my keys? laughs> because they took the time off and they were young enough, they actually recuperated and now yeah. are okay. But it's, it's the guys that keep taking these bumps longer and longer sure. and longer. Sure. That's where the damage is done. So if you're a, if you're a wrestler watching out there, in my mind, if you're going to get into this business, get in. Work hard, make some money, and get the f out. You know, yeah, yeah. or else you're gonna be you're gonna be a, a cripple. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the nut for getting into it at my age. Or a, <laughs> yeah, or a window licker of sorts. Yeah. But anyway, let's move on. So we said the Sin Cara uh, Mysterio versus Primo mm -hmm. Epico. Yeah. I liked. I actually liked this, and I've been a little bit hard on Sin Cara recently, but I really liked him teaming up with uh, Rey Mysterio, and I think this actually could be a really good thing for him because. He's just as a, as a, I guess, a, a wrestler himself, he's slowed down a bit since his injury. You know, he, he had, I forgot what his injury was, but since he's come back, he hasn't been exactly the same. And I think Rey Mysterio is a guy who went through that, who was luchador, had to kind of change sure. his style because of injuries. And I think that's a really good guy for Sin Cara to learn from. Absolutely. Um, and I loved, I thought this was a really great match. Uh, Primo and Epico, and I really like JBL talked about Primo and Epico's uh, history in the WWC down in Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and how they were both world champions. And I, right. you don't hear that very much. You don't. And I love that, that they recognize their past career because it really gives them a lot more credentials. Yeah, and that brings up the new the new announced team tonight. We had Jim mm -hmm. Ross on there and yes. you had JBL, mm -hmm. um, yeah. obviously. And, and Jim Ross even said it takes two people to re replace Jerry Lawler. Yeah. You know? I thought they did a great job. They did a great yeah. job. Of course they did. I mean, they're two of the best announcers in the Ever. world. Yeah, they're all yeah. hands out. Yeah, yeah. I thought the doubt. match was good because I... I I thought all four of the guys work well together. Of course, mm -hmm. they all have lucha background. Right. But um, their timing and everything, and their, their work together as a team against another team, you had two separate teams that really worked well. Yeah. Good. And, and felt like teams. Even yeah. though Mysterio and, Law, uh, and, and Sin Cara haven't been teaming together because they're both luchadors, yeah. they, they felt like a team. And they had some good double team stuff. Yeah. And, nice. And I, I like the the finish with the with the Swanton and the double 619. Yeah, so. that was cool. Yeah. And Exciting then the primetime stuff. players came down and attacked. Down they came down and attacked Young and mm -hmm. O'Neill and yeah. uh, set something up. I mean, that's that's the nature of their beast. Yeah, in professional wrestling on TV. I really like you could. I think you could actually see the general emotion in Titus O'Neill that you know if they got the, their tag, they were supposed to be the tag title match uh, mm -hmm. last night, and it got pulled for them, and they got st uh, Dan O'Brien and Kane were put in that, and I'm sure they were legitimately mad, mm. you know, and they came and said we're not going to have things taken from us anymore, we're going to do the taking. And that looked like he was coming from a really real place. I mean, I'm Good. sure it was written, but you could tell that was from a real place. Yeah, best and, promos uh, are right. Yeah, yeah. You know, yep. the, the, you mm -hmm. definitely you got to you got to draw. Who is it? Uh, Johnny Depp said that acting is. Um, what was that quote? He said, um, "Part of every role that you play is part of yourself. If mm -hmm. it's not." It's not acting. It's, yeah. not, it's, it's not just real. lying. It's yeah. not real. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the best wrestling characters are guys yeah. where their personality, as they say, turned up to eleven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If they give you the chance. Yeah. So here we are. The next match: Beth Phoenix versus Eve Torres. Couple of girls. Yeah. Very nice. I like that match. Yeah, I did too. I thought their work was good. They they executed everything well. They sold well. It was mm -hmm. a nice, tight little match. It didn't go over time. Yep. Because less is more, as we all know. Yeah. And they didn't drag it out. So it was boom, 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 done. Nice match. Yeah. Nice match. Think, exactly. You know, yeah. we always, Beth is one of the girls that really gets praised as being one of the amazing workers. But I think Eve is pretty good. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I enjoy her work. Oh, well, I thought she was right. real good. Yeah, I think yeah. she's very good. She's a tr real athlete. She was mm -hmm. like a USC cheerleader and she's a real athletic sure. person. Yeah. Let me ask you, Rick, um, what, what do you think like Mae Young and Moolah w would think of these girls nowadays? Do you think they're, they're, they're kind of jealous of them or do you think they just love <laughs> it or do you think they just, just you know? Well, Moolah and Mae Young were so, you know, as you know, 
they're very old school, and they, they mm. worked a lot of holes, and they did kicks and punches, but they were, they were shooters. But, I mean, Mae Young was a shooter. Yeah. So she, she would shoot with you just to take you down and really hurt you. But I, I think she knows where it's evolved. She's still with WWE doing something once in a while. Right. And I'm, I'm sure she would be pretty impressed with the athleticism that these girls have because they are very good. Yeah. You know, they, they do move well. I, I just am like you. I'm old school. I'd like to see more selling for a longer period of time. Right. It's, it's, right. That's not going on. Sure, sure. Reality. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Reality, yeah. Next, we had Brodus Clay and Heath Slater. Yeah, and I guess quickly, actually, before we get into that, um, I should mention uh, iTunes a little bit here real quickly. Rock and roll. And uh, just so you know, we are here on all our After Buzz shows here are uh, on iTunes. Um, you can get those, download them to your iPhone, uh, listen to us at the gym, uh, and... Uh, we would love you to go and rate and comment, and because uh, we do these for free, and it's a nice way. It only it takes, takes a minute. How long does it take? It takes a minute. Oh, there you know, is. and if you tell a friend, that would be great too. Yeah. So it only takes a minute. Just girl, takes a minute. Oh yeah. To fall in love. Yeah. All right. Rock and roll. <laughs> and while we're about plugging things, um, Bing is doing. Correct. Bing is it doing. Is doing. It certainly Bing is, is for doing. doing. I'm doing binging right now. And uh, it's getting close to that witching hour, the nine o'clock hour, where Mob Doctor's on. Have you guys caught any of that yet? No. 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 I have not caught any of that. It's supposed to be an exciting show. So. I watch too much wrestling. Oh, geez, uh, yeah, I yeah. don't. I try to avoid. I'm it, hooked but... on Lifetime for women. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Stop stories. I'm hooked on phonics. So next, we had the Miz TV section. Yeah, the new. Uh, it's the new Piper's Pit, kind of their new talk show. Right. Will there ever be another Piper's Pit? And and you wonder no. because you know it was a different era, mm -hmm. um, and, and Piper was so charismatic and so unique at right. the time. Mm -hmm. that everyone will always go the Piper's Pit do you think of the modern era the other you know interview segments will be remembered that fondly I don't think so personally I don't think so it was Piper's Pit was the first there, it was innovative there had really been nothing like that and now everything to me is a copy of Piper's Pit well look look, look. let's go back a couple of pages Piper's Pit Piper was, was off the wall type of yeah. guy mm. he didn't have to follow a script in a format to have right. Piper's Pit where today they want you to follow right. a script in a format so you never knew what Piper was going to do and he, it was crazy it was crazy way out in left field and that's what made it interesting yeah because he just would take it and go boom whatever happened yeah. happened and if it went that way you go that way and that way and move around you didn't know where it's going to end yeah, up yeah you had the classic segment when piper hit the coconut over jimmy snook his head and he shoved the banana in his face yeah when they shaved the haiti kid's head and yeah. you know bob orton they pull him out of the ring and they're holding him his feet are kicking and they're cutting his hair like you would never see that on tv today no, you know man. that stuff was cutting edge it was a different time the world has changed yeah, certainly I very did. much so but nonetheless way uh, too pc now Right, absolutely. Yeah. You know, there's sponsorships and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. Very but, corporate. Um, nonetheless, Ms. TV, what do you guys think? Oh, I kind of like the name. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the name was cool. It could I, be something. Yeah, I always liked the Miz. I yeah, always thought he had yeah. a great, great, great gift of the gab. Obviously, I do you know. too. The fans were chanting "boring" during it, which is they were. never good. But you know, but we'll see where it goes. You we'll know, see where one. it goes. Uh, a lot of times, I mean, you, I think if you look at the history of professional wrestling, you know, whoever it is, whether it's The Rock. Um, or you can think of every other guy that ever became super over. Mm. It didn't happen overnight. No. You know? Cena as well. They were going to let Cena yeah. go before mm -hmm. someone just, I think Stephanie heard him rapping. And we'll give him a little bit of a run with that. And before you know it, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I, always, I always tell the story of uh, I when I went to college up in the mountains in New Hampshire, I was away from TV for a few years. Um, and when some I was working with a big wrestling fan, I'm like, who's the big star? He's like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm -hmm. I was like, St stunning Steve Austin, the dude in the pink tights and the blonde hair and yeah. the TV channel. Uh -huh, that uh -huh. guy who I would go and make a sandwich when he was on. You would know, you like, really? Uh, when I was a kid, I wasn't a big fan. I wow. mean, now I go back and I appreciate that, yeah. that work. No, there's nothing but wrong that's with not that, what I know? wanted when yeah, I was 12. Absolutely. You know, yeah. that's, that's something that we all forget once we're involved in wrestling yeah. and, and we understand how to work and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. We forget what it was to be a fan, yeah. you know, and the fans are the ones that are spending money, you know, yeah. and they really are. And, and that's they're the ones that are paying the yeah. bills. Yeah. So what they're interested in is what they're interested in, yeah. you know, whether it takes talent or not, it's neither here nor there. Take a look at Jersey Shore. Yeah. You know, what I mean, yeah. there's not a whole lot of talent right. involved, at least on their side of things. You know and I, I mean? think, you know, your taste as a wrestling fan evolve as you got older. When I was a kid, it was Hulk Hogan, Hillbilly Jim. 
uh, Junkyard Dog. Those were the guys I loved as I started getting older, became the Bret Hart's and the Mr. Perfect's and the Shawn Michaels and the guys I really appreciated wrestling. And now I've gone back recently and watched some Hillbilly Jim matches and it's like, oh no. <laughs> I'm rotten. Yeah, it's like, I was like, oh no, Hillbilly Jim wasn't any very good. Hillbilly you know, Those are not very good bumps he's yeah. taken. But he didn't that, do much. But that uh, character just was so infectious as a kid. Yeah, but you could yeah. do a lot, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong here, back in the day you could do a lot less and get away with it, right? I mean, there were a lot of well, guys that... Yeah, I mean, you, we talked about this in the screening room. You could do uh, you do a couple of things and sold him, and that was the match. Mm. And even the finish could be a, a drop kick. Right. You know, it depends on what you're feeding the audience. If you're feeding them and they're connecting and they believe what's going on, then you've got a good match. Right. You don't have to do all these things to make a match work. But, I mean, that's what it calls uh, for nowadays. Yeah, that that's the way there. they're educated. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I should just throw a cheap plug. We do uh, old school wrestling here on After Buzz on Sunday. Check it out. Uh, you should check it out. And uh, we watch a lot of those matches where we've seen, like, body slams and getting uh, uh, pins off those. Get, very we, weird things that you would get. We have footage off of. all the way back to 1937. Yeah which was shot on black and white 16 millimeter in the ring. And there's some good matches, aren't there? Yeah, some really good stuff and stuff that you look at and like, that was so innovative. I can't believe no one's, yeah. th I mm. haven't seen that in 30 years. There's some yeah. really good stuff. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah. Well, tune in, check that out as well. There's a lot of great After Buzz shows on that. I mean, it, yes. it's pretty much if you like a TV show, you can find an After Buzz TV <laughs> wrap up of it. Right? Absolutely. Pretty much. Oh, yes. So we had Ryback come out, big old jacked up Ryback. And destroyed the set. Didn't yeah. really say much, did he? Didn't need to when you yeah. look like that. Well, I guess Booker came out first, and right. that was the first uh, right. person that was being interviewed. And yeah, what did what did Miz say? Uh, he, he accused Booker of basically missing the spotlight and trying to steal attention with the whole bro kick mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, situation. And then he said, you know, I'm going to bring out your new guest and brought out Ryback. And there Ryback came, came. Yeah. through couches around. Yeah. I'm not sure where it's going with Ryback. No? I'm not sure where they're going with that. Well, let's talk about his physique, Rick. I mean, you know, you're a guy who's been around bodybuilding your entire life. Yeah. You know, you have a good understanding of how to maintain a yeah. decent physique. What's your take on Ryback? I mean, here's a guy who's on the road, you know, what, how many years? 250 to 300 yeah. days out of the it's, year? I mean, you're home a day and a half a week. It's not like that. easy for a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. You've got to eat six times a day. You have to have access to a gym, and you have to have access to your supplements as well, whether they're good supplements or the other type of supplements. But you have to have something to maintain that size. It just doesn't happen and stay by itself. It, right. it, you can lose it real quick on the road. Yeah. yeah. They say he eats eight to 10,000 calories a day, something like that, which is a lot of food. That's possible. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot of food. It's a lot. Yeah. I was going to say, I do 3,000, and it's a lot of 3,000 is a lot. That's How a many lot. babies is 8,000 calories? Oh, my God. An average baby. How many calories <laughs> if you just baby, ate a whole baby? <laughs> <laughs> if Ryback Piquet was a cannibal and just ate a baby, how much calories? <laughs> Would it just be one baby a day? Or <laughs> You could eat, eat eight, eight, big, eight, uh, eight Big Macs, and you got it made. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be great. I'll just start each. eating Big is Macs. That, is that how much they are, really? About 1,000 each, yeah. God damn. Yeah, In and out burger, four by four. That's only yeah, three why, meals, why, two burgers. Why do they call it in and out burger? Because it goes in and comes out. Is that right? <laughs> it, it, it's because it was uh, it was a drive through before. There used to be no insides in the uh, early in and outs. If you see, they're a double drive through. Okay. So it's you get your burger, you're How in you and you're out. We oh. are learning How things today. Know? He knows, huh? everyth he knows everything about everything. And He's you would think I'd cookie. be great at Trivial Pursuit, but I'm terrible at it. <laughs> 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 because the information I know isn't worth anything, uh, right. usually. <laughs> no, well, the question with Ryback, where are they going to go with him? I mean, it's, it's been the same thing over and over. Yep. Body slamming two guys and then two guys and then nothing's really yeah. come of it. Right. Where do they need to go with him? You know, I mean, he's not going to be the next Ultimate Warrior, yeah. uh, thank God. But, um, you know, couldn't there be another Ultimate Warrior? Yeah. Not, not, oh, not uh, yeah, I climate. don't know. Not that's, in today's climate. You know, that's one of a kind, too. We keep yep. asking that. We always bring that up. Where are they going with it? And I think us that kind of no wrestling, we're like, where are they going? But all the fan people that are just fans that I talk to love the Ryback segments. Yeah. We want more of that. That's what we love. And they love this stuff, so they're not getting bored with it no, yet. No, no. Well, um, it's simple, and it's, it's there. It's yeah. like Santino. So Say what you want about him, yeah. you know, he's just digestible, mm -hmm. entertaining television. I he's, would think it would be too. Pac-Man. Yeah, I would think it would be too much of the same, but it's not yet. They're not bored of it, and they're not loving yet. it more. So everyone's, yeah. we want more of that Ryback stuff. So Absolutely. as long as it's working, they're going to keep giving it to you. All right. So then we had Wade Barrett versus Justin Gabriel, a or, couple of non-Americans. Uh, or do we have Ziggler versus Santino? Ziggler and Santino. We did have Ziggler yeah. versus Santino. How could you forget your favorite? Well, you know, we're running out of time, and once <laughs> I start talking about Santino, it's we, over. We can go for a while, you know, between <laughs> him and Maria Canella. So I tell you, I could be here all day. Uh. So thank God she isn't here; otherwise, we wouldn't be able to talk about. Oh, is she a big Santino fan? No, I'm a big. Or Maria you're a big fan. Maria fan? Okay, well, who isn't? How can you not be oh, a big yeah, Maria fan? 
just look at the comments on there right now. It, people are writing, where's Where Maria? Is Maria? <laughs> She'll be back. We we'll swear. take some phone calls later on today. Call yeah. in um, and um, maybe we'll do a competition. Competition for a date with Maria. Something oh, like that. Yeah, I don't know that Mike would like that very much. So. <laughs> <laughs> we can, Mike can go along on the date. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mike can be the chaperone. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> How Brilliant. uncomfortable would that be? And you put a camera on that with somebody on a date with Marie with Mike chaperoning just in the corner Fantastic. watching. Fantastic. Right. Be great. I'm going to write down a, a number here. It's a three-digit number. I'm not going to tell you what number it is, but if you call in and you get this number right, you can go on a date <laughs> with Maria <laughs> Canellas and Mike Bennett. <laughs> three-digit number. Anyway, so let's let's go on then. It's uh, Ziegler and Santino. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? I think this may have been the most entertaining segment of the of the night. You know, maybe not the best match of the night, but the most entertaining match of the right. night, most definitely. And I think that's why people watch Raw. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I mean, they don't. I don't think they watch Raw for good matches. They just no. watch to be entertained. It's a well, TV show. Santino yeah. can have a match by himself. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's that good. He could. He yeah. could literally r wrestle a broom on national television and probably bring now, the house down. Here's a guy that could have a Piper's Pit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe he could. He could pull it off. Right. And and do what something a little it? different. He's crazy enough. Santino. I don't know. He uh, he does have a, a show on YouTube. I haven't really watched it, but called Santino's yeah, Foreign Exchange. That's right. Yeah. 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 So he does have a little segment, like reality segment he does, but I haven't actually watched it to see what it is. All right. But I'm sure it's very funny. We call it Santino's stage. <laughs> I loved the uh, power walk he got into. Yeah, that he pushed right aside. He's just power Fantastic. walking back and forth, love and it. it was yeah, it was love so it. funny. All right, so let's get move on. Uh, Wade Barrett versus Justin Gabriel, as mm -hmm. I said earlier, a couple of non-Americans there. Um, yeah. you know, and I think they were trying to push on commentary different styles, different yeah. influences. Obviously, Wade Barrett, they're trying to push as a tough guy from the north of England, uh, as being a coal miner. He's a bare knuckle brawler. Bare -knuckle and brawler. Is he actually though? Is he actually? No, no, he's not. Well, he's he supposedly has a bare knuckle brawling background. Oh, really? In his earlier years, yeah. yes. Well, maybe he does. Maybe yeah. he does. It, um, Wikipedia says that, so it's got to be true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about your Wikipedias. Yeah. But uh, supposedly he does have some. I mean, whether that means he fought twice hmm. in England, you know, who knows what that means? Yeah. Uh, who knows? But right. he's got some some background. The question is, do, do the fans believe that? Well, that's it. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, take take Samoa Joe. I always use an mm -hmm. example of someone that. Um, there was awesome. one person in the crowd that didn't think he could kick your ass. Say what you want about what pro wrestling is or what pro wrestling isn't. Once he was in that ring, that I mean, no one would have dared to jump in yeah. the ring with him, you know, because mm -hmm. how he carried himself. And Joe can certainly back it up. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't that. He just had that that charisma, that ability, uh, you know. And, mm -hmm. and that's what's so important about drawing money, wouldn't you say, Rick? Like, in your years of watching wrestling, the guys that drew money were the ones that just had that it, that, that they had ability. It. Yeah. We just talked about it the other day with somebody. It, you either have it or you don't have it. Mm. You know, it's that charisma. It's just that total package, and a lot of guys don't have it, and some just do. Yeah. Back in the days when I first wrestled Buddy Killer Austin, he, he scared the death out of me, and he was my first match. And I said, I do not want to work with that guy. He's brutal. He's one of the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> but he drew the crowds. He was the guy that did it. And Freddie Blassie, the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's Wade Barrett. When I'm, I know disrespect to Wade Barrett, but people from back in the day came from unknown places. And they just came out of the woodwork into a territory to work. And you didn't really know their background, but whatever yeah. they told you, you believed it. Now, with Wade Barrett, we know where he came from. Right. And we've seen this. So how all of a sudden you put a title on somebody as a Bare Knuckles champion, he was never that before. Mm -hmm. so they're going to make him that overnight, and then you have yeah. to buy that. And, and, yeah. in, in a way, it's kind of arrogant uh, for yeah. them to go, well, they'll forget about that. Well, they yeah. believe yeah. what we tell them now. Yeah, exactly. You know, But then uh, what's the other option? that They just keep going with the same thing that no. wasn't really working? I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's a tough situation. It's interesting. Like, Shannon, who does uh, SmackDown with us mm -hmm. sometimes, always says, like when we watch the old school, that uh, it's – Sign of a good heel is when they can be, you know, a heel that does all these disgusting, dirty things, and the only thing that keeps the audience from charging them is fear. That they're scared themselves not right. to go in and do something. That guys like Ox Baker back in the days, you know, it's right. just that the audience is scared to get in there. Right. You know, that's right. a frightening person. Well, they're scared if they walk up the aisle towards them. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's, that's a good heel. Yep. Yeah. Somebody you do not want to cross. Then we had um, the, uh, I guess from what we I understand, one of the most exciting uh, new tag teams in the <laughs> WWE of one of my old friends, Daniel Bryan mm -hmm. and uh, Kane, hugging it out. Yep, yep. wrestling Kofi and Truth. Kofi Truth and little Jimmy. Don't forget little oh, Jimmy who was out forget. there. 
um, watching the match, apparently. I saw him. <laughs> Had a, he was given a Subway sandwich earlier as well, little Jimmy. Yeah. In right. that excellent uh, commercial that they did. Yeah. Um, good match. It was a good match. Yeah. Kept things moving. Oh, yeah. yeah. Told a story. Yeah. Dragon's got to be happy. Yeah. Dragon's got to oh. be loving it. You know, after... Yeah. Me and him, we beat each other up for like 25, 30 minutes every time we wrestled. I've got more scars on my head from, from Dragon than anybody else. Yeah. And to now make probably, I'd say, 10 to 20 times the money. Oh, I'm sure. To hug someone and yeah. say, yes, yes, yes. It's funny. He used to do all the best wrestler in the world, all these crazy things. And now he goes out and says one word and the place explodes. Yeah. That's how it works. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. One little thing. People's, yeah. people's elbow. I am like, jealous. Once you catch that. Don't be. Should be. Nah, should don't be. be jealous. Why not? You have to let it go. That's like, right, it's like a relationship. You had such an amazing career. Yeah, well, my bank account. And it's not over yet. So. You're still doing stuff. I'll put money in your account for you. <laughs> 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 All right, moving on. Randy Orton Tenzai. Well, a couple of uh, guys have been around a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a couple of very talented guys. Yes. Tenzai, even back before he spent time in Japan, I always liked, but. People get seasoned in Japan when they go. I don't know anybody, you know. We got a couple of guys, um, uh, the Bravado Brothers in Ring of Honor now, and they mm -hmm. came out and they were doing sort of a not a comedy gimmick, but they are Native American and they, they they did this gimmick where they lived with their grandmother and they had sort of check shirts and they were very presentable, right? Blah, 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 you know, very very entertaining stuff. But when they went to Japan, they only over over there for a, for a little limited time. But just when they came back, you could notice the difference. You mm. know, they really had uh, taken stuff on. And that was, again, we talked back there yeah. about when there were territories. You, you right. went to a different territory and yeah. you picked something up from all these different places. It's true. Mm -hmm. I like Tenzai. I think mm -hmm. he's good. And, and the yeah. last time he had worked with Orton on SmackDown, um, the same deal. Yeah. I mean, it was a good match. I mean, guys, he, he came back from Japan, like you said, seasoned. I had said that on yeah. the show yeah. on SmackDown as well. I think the SmackDown match was a little bit better than this one. But it, it was. was. Still, it was still a good match, though. It was a little better. Um, and I liked, I actually liked the finish with the RKO out of the corner with him charging and then yeah. uh, him catching that. So I, I, I really liked that. Um, but yeah, as I said, te everything Tensai does looks powerful and something that you would not want to be hit with. You know, every no, single move. Very definite. Just, yeah, just definite the, his kicks and his punches and everything looks really definite. Right, right. Someone want to do the live read? Yeah, yeah, I can I can do a little bit of a, a live read here. Well, uh, beginning on September 25th at 8 p.m., which, uh, by the way, also is my birthday. Mm. Um we the uh, new Fox premiere. Their new Tuesday lineup is going to be uh, starting uh, with New Girl and Show Ben and Kate and uh, the Mindy Project. So what's uh, the Mindy Project? The Mindy Project. Uh, it's uh, is that is Mindy it? Robinson? It's Mindy Kaling. Ah, she's a brand new office. It's a series premiere of the new comedy, The Mindy Project. Okay. Uh, if you're looking for a night of laughs, Fox premiere Tuesday's got you covered. So Welcome it's starting September 25th at 8 p.m. I actually so. saw previews on those. Did you? Yeah, they look good. Yeah. They look good. I'm sure it will be uh, I'm sure it will be great. New shows are always... Oh, it's always fun to have new shows. So. Well, they certainly need them. Yes, they do. Speaking of fun, Zack Ryder. I mean, there's a guy who's always a, a barrel of laughs, mm -hmm. right? You know? Yep. Made a name for himself, pretty much. I mean, there was a guy that came in and didn't really get a push off the van. Was about to be fired. Right. He was what? on the cut list when his show hit big. Right. On online. So. What's the internet show? It's called the Long Island something. Z Long Island uh, True Story, or whatever it's based on. You know, the Hollywood E, right. e True the Hollywood Story. So, uh, yeah, it's it's actually a really funny show. It's and I know he it produces still it. Yeah, he still does. He's still doing it every week. It's Good. uh, but WWE. It's it. now on the WWE's YouTube page. It used to be just on his. Okay. You know, so they kind of. It? It's. I guess it's just. You, a goofy kind of show with just little skits kind of mm. uh, and different people come in. His dad's really involved. One of his best friends, the big O who's an independent wrestler is involved. So, so it's a reality show. Kind of. Yeah. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's, it's entertaining. It's really funny. And yeah. all the catchphrases and, and, you know, like uh, we have a 12 year old that, that trains with us over at Rick's that's named Spencer and he loves Zack Ryder and he watches that show and that's his favorite I thing, which well, yeah, I, over. yeah. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, it seems like they're finally putting him back on TV a little bit, but he was kind of gone for a minute, mm -hmm. as popular as he is. All right. Never know. So it was him and Damien Sandow. Mm. Relatively new sort of character, but a guy who's been around a long time. Yeah. And a, and a kind of character, it, it makes me think of so much of the genius, Lanny Poffo. Of course. Of course. You know, 
just well, he Even wears the voice. same colour tights. He's mm-hmm. got the same sort of look. It's the same sort of heat. Same thing. Um, they kind of have that same like, f- some, sounds like something sure. in their throat kind of voice. Sure. Uh, but but I think I mean I, I think I see big. Not to say that you know the, the genius didn't have right. uh, ever, ever you know a run there, but I see kind of bigger things for Sandow. Yes. I think. Yeah, you know? I agree. I think WWE arguably now is in a stage where they're really looking for guys to step up and fill that sort of over void if you want to call yeah. it that you know what i mean he's uh, got it yeah he's good he's got the ability um but you know everybody has to find that special something yeah you know, whatever i it enjoy is. his storytelling i think he's really right. got some cool old school stuff and he did a really cool match a couple of weeks ago uh where they were really working the count and the outside mm-hmm. and, and yep. you know I, I i love him uh i loved at one point here and guys don't do this very much anymore he pulled his knee pad down Mm-hmm. to drop a, a knee, you know, and you don't see that as much, you know, guys pulling other guys' pads off to kick at their that limb or, you know, working kind of the knee pads and elbow pads a bit. Um, he did that today, and I thought that was really cool. I haven't seen yeah. that in a while. Interesting storytelling. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. The difference is, and I've always said this, is is those little things that they, they make guys over, they have good matches and stuff like that. But in terms of dollars and cents, and this is where I think, you know, WWE always is looking, it's like it's the big picture that draws money. I mean, mm-hmm. you think back to, to Austin or The right. Rock. I mean, they were guys that did a lot of those things, certainly Austin from his years on the oh, road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what was it that made him a big draw? I mean, I'm asking you, what do you guys think? Well, when why he, did those guys draw? I mean, I guess it was because partially he, the right time. You know that uh, I think you know wanting to uh, the the whole thing of him fighting his boss, fighting the establishment, yeah, mm-hmm. fighting the establishment, standing up for rights for himself I, against right. the boss. That but, was a time everyone was sick of their boss sure. and they wanted yeah. to go punch their boss, and this guy got to do that, and yeah. it was kind of the anti-hero. Right? Were yeah. Steve Austin though, or the 2012 Steve Austin, whoever that is in professional wrestling today, mm-hmm. were he to come along now and to do the same sort of angle with Vince yeah. or very or, different world post 9/11? Who knows? Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Who knows exactly? And this yeah. is this is what WWE is facing, mm-hmm. you know, trying to find that next big guy to draw money. Right. Well, Vince isn't it. the big heel anymore, so that wouldn't work. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, work. obviously Cena is, but yeah, who's the next one? You know, Randy Orton's never quite made it to that. You know, up to that mm. Cena level like they thought he would. He's, I mean, obviously a huge superstar, but I don't think has been that it guy yet. Uh, yeah. they, they thought he was going to be. Um, so yeah, the question is, who's that going to be? I think it might be Sheamus at some point, but yeah. uh, not everyone agrees with me on that. Right, right. I don't yeah. know. I just look at him. I go, you know, he's not maybe the greatest wrestler in the world, but was neither was Hulk Hogan, you know. And that was the guy that made all that money, and the guy that I was drawn to, and the kids were drawn to. And I think Sheamus kind of has that same I thing. I think when you look at the guys who've drawn or whatever else, take now Lou Thez was a great draw, mm-hmm. right? But that was a time where America was all about hard work Mm -hmm. you know i mean and and they respected guys that you know got up and and were athletes and he wore the the fancy watch and everything else and that worked in that time Mm -hmm. hulk hogan in the 80s america in the 80s was a very sort of materialistic superficial i don't even mean that in a bad sense but it was very what you see is what you get it was Mm -hmm. you know it was was reaganomics uh, and um hulk hogan embodied that perfectly steve austin counterculture of the late 90s and Mm -hmm. the same thing with with grunge and everything else Mm -hmm. and ecw Mm -hmm. it all worked yeah so if we look at the world today in 2012, what are those things? What what is America? What is the world? What's 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 moving ratings? UFC, yeah. reality TV. Mm-hmm. That's in my mind, and I don't know if anybody. I mean, Dragon can do that sort of thing. Right. Punk can do it a little bit. Joe can certainly do it. Or maybe there's somebody coming up now who we haven't even thought of. Exactly. Yeah. That will be someone, but it's someone who's got to be given the opportunity, you know, by yeah. WWE or TNA or whoever it happens to be, and go. We're going to run with this, yep. and it's going to connect with the people because it's new and it's different. Yeah. In, in, in whatever that is, I don't think we've seen it yet. No, but it could, be, it could be anybody now with a totally different image if they change yeah. the image. But you don't know, like you said, until you mm-hmm. change it. Because right. Austin had gone through several images, and The sure. Rock, too. I mean, sure. it's always something different. Yeah. Then, right. then when you hit that bullseye and something clicks, then that's what happens. And yeah. then you've got to run with it, though. You yeah, you've got to run I mean? with it. Then you've got to run with it. You've got to know that. That, yeah. that, that to me, is the idea of a good promoter. Mm-hmm. You know, It's not coming up with great ideas that make money. It's understanding where maybe an idea that you didn't think was going to draw money is going to draw money going, okay, we're going in that direction. Yeah. Sam, um, Sam Munch. 
Suchnik, I think, was a, was a great promoter who did Big that a lot. Right. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, he when he he would see guys getting over, he'd go, okay, we'll just go in that direction. Right. Got to get beyond the ego. Yeah, and I agree with your thing about having to look at things like UFC because you know if you look at like the UFC, the way they promote fights, they can take two guys you've never heard of from the backyard. And they will promote that fight to make you make thinking that's going to be the greatest fight there ever is going to mm, be, yeah. you know. And it doesn't matter who the two guys are, really. They they have a promoting way to to a way of promoting that with their interviews and their video packages. And WWE doesn't do it in the same way. I think they could UFC really the boat on one guy, though. take a, a step up. Who's that? Remember the black guy they got that was a street fighter? They brought him out to make him a hero. <laughs> Kimbo Slice. <laughs> Kimbo Slice. Did they? I thought they brought him as a heel, didn't they? They did, but he only lasted one fight. Yeah. The end well, that that's because Dana White. I mean, if we, it's, it's a whole long story, but yeah, Dana White basically said he would never be anything, and the only way he could come into the UFC was through the Ultimate Fighter. So yeah, he yeah. came into a couple things, and essentially everything Dana White said about him was kind of was right. Was more yeah, yeah right. Even though Dana said he got a lot more respect for him when he came in, but yeah, and he was better. But, but everybody had their money on him at first. Did they? <sighs> they, they had a lot people people who didn't know what they were talking right, about yeah. did. You know, the people <laughs> who would go, oh, as Dana White always said, he was the toughest guy at the barbecue. You know, uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah. And and uh, he wasn't really a mixed martial artist and he tried to do some yeah. stuff, but yeah. he's having a pretty good boxing career right now. He's undefeated. Yeah, he's so. made some money and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that's the big thing. At the end of the day, but yeah, he's done all right. I'll say, you know, nobody. You know, he wasn't the greatest fighter, but still, like two of the two of his fights are the most watched fights like ever. Uh, people love to tune in to watch Kimbo fight. How do you know this? Because I just read stupid stuff like that. He knows all the everything. Time. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Wasted youth. I'm just on the internet. I'm on the internet way too much. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on. In the main event: John yes. Cena and Sheamus versus Punk and Del Rio. Mm -hmm. yes. Paul Heyman was out there, and as we said at the beginning, it played off the promo. Yes. I think what they're trying to do, and I think this is great, is to try and get the referees involved more, mm -hmm. um, to where they can be involved in storylines and angles yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. Because you know, and I've said it again and again with U UFC now. As much as they like to say that UFC isn't their competition, everybody's our competition. I mean, it's definitely had an effect yeah. on what the 18 to 24 year old male considers, you know, like real. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and so I think professional wrestling has to evolve somehow. Yeah. To, 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 to where did the, um, where did that come from getting the referee involved in wrestling today? You know, it's old school. Right. Referee was the third man in the ring. Yeah. He was part of the show. Putting the foot over the rope is old school. It's all part of it, and it's coming back a little bit. And, but they've got to keep going with it because this will happen again and again. It's yeah. happened for as long as I've been involved in business in wrestling. You know, mm -hmm. every now and again you'll see a main event go like six minutes, and you go, oh, "Okay, cool, it's different." Something, but then they won't keep going with it. You know, it needs yeah. a, a categorical change. Right. For what you really never see do. anymore is two out of three. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Uh, they did what? Uh, they oh, did a pay per view main event a few did months you? ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they they main, main event that Daniel Bryan and Sheamus had. A you've two seen it more than once. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I I, I watch a lot of the independent stuff yeah. as well. No, I mean, no, I'm talking WWE. Oh, WWE. You don't I see them like they used to. Yeah. Right. Independent, yeah. If you watch yeah. Lucha too, they do it all all mm. the time. Lots of two it, out of three. It's tough. I mean, you know, to, to have a two out of three falls match ever so difficult. I want to cut angle in um in TNA, and it's tough because like obviously nobody knows. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows it's going to the third fall. Yeah. So the first two falls, in my mind, are kind of redundant, you know? Yeah. Anyway, um, so... Just one quick thing, yeah. quick, too. Did you notice that uh, they are now mentioning the referees' names again? That was a no-no uh, for a while. They wouldn't... They yeah. were just the referee. Right. And now they're actually... They made they mentioned Chad Patton by name today, yeah. and, and they're starting to do that. But just quickly with... Uh, Punk put, put his foot on the ropes when the pin went down, mm -hmm. which is where we're talking about full circle with him in the referee's ear. You made the wrong decision. You made the wrong decision, you know, with the referee before who made the right decision. Mm -hmm. So we'll see Same where thing. where that goes. Interesting. Then, you know, it's yeah. different. I remember as I was as I was watching them walk out like that, I go, oh, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. listening, I'm watching, because yeah. this is unusual, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what you need. It Something was. Something unusual. Part of me goes, well, wait a second. If there's heat with the referee, he's not going to referee the referee, so where's the payoff? Yeah. But, but I, I don't think for a TV show, I don't think that's no. as important. I and think. It, was, it was cool the way the referee's like i didn't see it and he's yep. walking off with punk still in his ear yep. and Heyman behind him going almost like 
leave him alone. Like, we don't want to get in trouble don't here and hit trouble. a referee. Yeah. You know, uh, kind of trying to pull punk off yeah. of him. There's a lot um, of smart people in that company, mm-hmm. you know. There's a lot of people that, that have been around a long time and have got plenty of ideas, yeah. you know. Same thing in TNA, you know. Yeah. It's always a case, though, of are those people going to be able to get, you know, the, the pull to, to put yeah. those ideas to the forefront and stick with those ideas, yeah. you know. Arguably, professional wrestling today, you know, it has so many chiefs. I mean, even, even with Vince McMahon is, is, yeah. is the, the top guy, there's still a lot of people that he listens to and, yeah. can, and, and yeah. he is, you know, famous for changing his right. opinion at different points. You know, same thing in TNA. You know, whereas back in the day, Roy Shire or Sam Muchnick or, you know, whoever it was, you know, that was it. There was one chief. Eddie one Graham. Chief. Exactly. You know, like, that was it. I mean, they, he wouldn't ask a lot of people. He'd go with it. And, and if it didn't work at the box office, either that guy would be out of a job um, or someone else, you know, would come in. Yeah. Know, but now it's different. It's totally really different. That's exactly how it was yeah, in the yeah. territories. I'd say everything Punk does too is believable to me. You know, just when he's going, you believe what he's saying, and you believe he believes it. So yeah, I, 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 I it. love, I love that about him. Yeah, he always has. Ever since I've known him, ever since I wrestled him in front of thirty-five people, and that's amazing. Joliet, Indiana, or whatever the hell it was. I just saw a match with you in a tag team match against him oh, the really? other day, a Ring of Honor from like eight years ago or Don't something like that. that but. Yeah. Anyway, so that was the match. That was the show. Um, on a scale of one to ten, what would you say, hmm. Rick? I give it a seven. Seven. Yeah, I give it about a seven. I'd seven say. as well. Yeah. I'd say it's it's an easy seven, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it you is. Know what I mean, it's an easy seven. If if a girl asks you if she's a one out of ten, yeah, seven's a safe bet, right? Yeah, I guess <laughs> it's like the 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 porch not too hot, not too cold. It's okay. Yeah, it's, you know, a little seven and change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I think a two-hour show. If we had been able to get all this into two hours, it would have been yeah. better. But I guess right. you know so. The three hours gets more guys working. Look, there's, so. mo- there's movies out there today, big blockbuster movies, and I hear they're two, over two hours long, two and a half. I don't go. Yeah. And right. that's in a movie. We right. can get up and go to the bathroom and get popcorn. It's just too long to Yeah, see. yeah. There's a lot of other factors involved, commercials and, yeah. and, and advertising rights fees and stuff like that. But Should we take some So, yeah, let's, let's do that. Have we got any uh, any callers in here? Phone number 424-256-1729. Who's on the line, please? Luna, where, where, where are you calling from, Caller? You sound like you're in Taiwan. Hi, it's Yelena. I'm calling from Philly. Willie oh, from Philly. Philly. You've spent some time in Philly, haven't you? I have, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name again, sir? Ma'am? My name is Yelena. Yelena. What a beautiful name. What would you like to say, Yelena? Thank you. Um, well... I couldn't see the show today because I was moving out, but um, I want to know if Jensen is ever coming back. That's that's. Uh, <laughs> we hate all of you guys. This is the other crew coming back. I've I've heard a lot of great things about Jensen. I have honestly. I have too. Yeah. But I, I've never Former writer. Yet, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, I just I love all you guys, but I just like I always talk to Jensen, and he's really funny yeah, too. So. Um, he's uh, out of town. He's out of town at the moment. I think you can probably find him on Twitter and, and ask him himself when he's going to be in yeah. next. That we're probably the he best. He may be back next week or, or the Maria. week after. But yeah, yeah, yeah. or Maria. Did you want to ha- have a shot for the date? with maria or not yelena i'm not I sure i mean i guess you want to have a go i don't know what the three it's a okay it's a three. i don't know what the three numbers are going to be just 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 say the first three numbers that come to your head um 123 123 it is not 123 uh. Thank you we for calling. We do not have a winner. No, unfortunately. There's but. 999 <laughs> different possibilities. Can you imagine if somebody actually gets this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for calling in. Uh, tune in next week, <laughs> and uh, hopefully Jensen and Maria's boobs and the rest of Maria will be here as well. Okay. Thanks, sweetheart. Okay. See you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. And who's next? Seems to be nobody there oh, at the moment. A, a blank slate, so to speak. Is there anybody else calling in? We've got about uh, 13, 14 minutes left on the show. They are. If you want to call in, um, you've got the number. Call in, ask a question, and you might be going on a date with Maria Canellis. I can't believe the lines are not flooded for that. 
and Mike Bennett. Maybe they're too scared of Mike Bennett. Probably. Yeah. I mean, he's... that's the funny. That's what would be the funny part is yeah. the, watching the person in fear of Mike. Da 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 da. He could be the this driver. Would, this would be good for a, a good bit for a Ring of Honor there. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Oh, oh. marvelous. We had Matt Hardy on the show last uh, on, on Saturday for the pay per view. Oh, excellent. How was that? Yeah, yeah, very great, very entertaining. You know, I mean. Hardy's a, a lightning rod for controversy, mm. you know, um, and uh, he he was full aware. I think Did you say in. controversy, controversy. I like what did that. I say? It's is a nice that, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big word. It is a big word. Many many things. All right, we've got we've got another caller on the phone. Uh, identify yourself to the Afterbuzz TV show. Who are you calling from? Hello, this is Tia. I'm from NYC, but I'm currently in VA. All right, Tia. How are you doing, doll? I'm doing great. I'll give it a seven as well. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Who was your favorite wrestler on the show tonight, if you had to pick one? I actually surprised me like the primetime players. They really surprised me because I wasn't expected to like them. The primetime oh, players, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you like them. If, if, you, if you had to date one of them, Young or O'Neal, <laughs> who would you date, Tia? Oh, no, because he has a better mic skill. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to talk. He's good with his tongue. All oh. right. Fantastic. <laughs> Get your mind well, you out know, of the gutter. It was a good show to me. And I'm curious, what do y'all think will happen with Paul Heyman when Lesnar returns? Well, I mean, he's going to be right behind Brock Lesnar, right? Or in Punk, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I can't see I can see them all getting on pretty well together, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I think they've all got the same sort of mindset. But somewhere down the line, I think there's going to be some trouble. You know, yeah, there's got to be, right? Right, absolutely. I mean, what a match that'd be! I think that'd be a fantastic match, right? What do you think, Tia? Brock and Punk. Yeah, Brock and Punk, WrestleMania. What do you think? It would be really interesting. It seemed like they're playing Lesnar with The Rock, but I think The Rock will be back with Cena, so I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, exciting times. Have you ever been to WrestleMania, Tia, or not? Yes, you went this year, did you? No, I did not go this year, but I watched it on TV, and I'm happy the money was worth it. Yeah? Oh, good. Good. Very nice. Do you ever watch uh, any other wrestling? you watch Ring of Honor? Do you watch TNA at all? I do not watch TNA, but I do love Kurt Angle, even though I haven't watched it in quite a while. Okay. I only watched WWE since 1999. Right on. Rock and roll. Old school. There you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That perked my ears up. All right. Who isn't? Who isn't, Tia? All right, sweetheart. Thanks very much for the call. Tune in next week. And uh, oh, do you want to try and get a date with Mike Bennett or uh, Maria? Maria? Oh, I I'm guess cool, we could do I either. Do either huh? Maria, though. I saw, I saw her. I remember watching her wrestling. I was upset when WWE let her go. Yeah, yeah. I always thought she was a very. I still think she's a very talented very person. Much so. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, selfishly, I'm glad they let her go so I can see more of her in Ring of Honor. Yeah, she's doing quite a bit there yeah, now, right? Uh, yes, 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 she is. Um, she's uh, she's there all the time. For the most part, she wasn't there this weekend. She had other things on her plate. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, a great duo. A great duo. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Certainly sparks up Mike Bennett's matches. Mm. Not that they need sparking up, but nonetheless, nothing like a. a Doesn't a, hurt. Beautiful woman on the outside to take a look. Doesn't yes. hurt. All right. Thanks, Tia. Appreciate it. We'll yeah. talk to you next week. All right. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. Yeah. And I'd like to say real quick that people who do <laughs> just watch WWE should definitely please go check out TNA and Ring of Honor. Uh, some amazing wrestling and types of wrestling that you don't see in WWE. You know, Also, Japan really? stuff is great to check out. And so there's just uh, amazing amounts of wrestling out there that's not WWE. I don't, I don't even know that they know I'm on right now. Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. Yeah, we got another caller. I, I thought I heard a voice. Yeah, I thought I heard a voice yeah. coming from. What's, What's your name, mate? On? This is I'm, This is Todd. I'm here with the Ryback Report for this week. Oh, oh there we go. Da, 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 Feed me right. more. All right. That is awesome. Thank you, Dodger McGinnis. Like you I said, it. Ryback, next in Kyle Champion. I just feel it. It feels like it's the right, the right progression for his character. You think he's the next world champion? Intercontinental. Oh, Intercontinental. Intercontinental oh, okay. champion. Yeah, yeah. I could see that with I this building up the, with The Miz right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this. Yeah, I feel like I'm glad to give Ryback some top flight competition to get in the ring instead of like losers like Heath Slater. Oh, I don't know. I think Heath Slater is a very, very talented wrestler, yeah. you know? He's just uh he does yeah. a good job making Ryback look great. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I love, don't get wrong. I like the one man band, baby. He's amazing. <laughs> <laughs>
But that's how I, I was kind of talking about Ryback. Well, we got to talk about Wade Barrett and how awesome he is. Uh-huh. Wade Barrett is great. That, that move, I love that elbow to the face. That's like the greatest wrestling move ever. We I didn't mention that. I, I really invented enjoyed that, that finish. The, I invented that, actually. That was the elbow I, to the face? You, you yeah. invented that? Yeah, I invented <laughs> that. You go back and watch my matches. That was mine. Did you invent the clothesline as well? I saw you do that TNA, man. The yeah. Stuff. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> but yeah, I, I did. That's you, Kurt Angle, man. That was great. I Thank remember you. that. Those awesome matches. Yeah. He did do that. He kind of what put the arm around and grabbed his face and then whipped them around and hit him with the uh, the forearm there. Yeah. I, I did. Th- that was kind of a cool looking finisher. Mm, mm, interesting. Yeah. interesting. Are you going to steal that and use it in your matches? No, okay. I, I don't like doing that. Actually, I was going to use Sandow's finisher and a week before he debuted it, and then I took it out of my, I my repertoire. I know use, all right? You should bust out the Rude Awakening. Nobody does that no more. Yeah, yeah I've, I've done a couple of Rude Awakenings in class before. I, 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 I enjoy throwing out a, a Rude Awakening. So that's See, a... Ev- Give props to Ravish and Rick Rude, man. Yeah. Rick Rude, one of my favorites growing up. What a guy. What a guy. Great All abs. Right, so, okay, so three numbers, right? So I'm going to go. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right. What's that? Yeah, go oh, on. A three, no, the three numbers. We get Dave Maria, right? I got this. So yeah. Go 100, 27, 34. They're single digit numbers, not. Yeah, it's one three digit number. All right, 123. 123. Is that. Is that, that really what you said? <laughs> One hundred twenty. One. I cannot believe it. That is uh, crazy. Uh, Take a look. Was that really it? Two hundred and fifty-six. I was gonna say because someone th- the caller before the first caller said one twenty-three. I was gonna say that, that was uh. Yeah. <laughs> Close, but thanks for playing anyway. Um, I'm sure uh, uh, Maria gonna, will be devastated. She's going to be devastated when she didn't know one won the date. <laughs> we'll have to play next week. Next week, uh, we'll play again. Anyway, she's off thanks very much for calling. Um, we appreciate the Ryback report. Uh, hopefully, we'll hear from you again. We've got to wrap things up here. So thanks to everybody for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed Raw as much as we did. Um, this is me, Nigel McGuinness, saying goodbye to Rick Drazen, Ryan Clum, and everybody else here in the AfterBuzz TV studios in Burbank, Encino, California. Yeah. Yeah. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.